We're all excited about that. Beauty of the day on Friday. Some exciting there. Yeah. That's the good thing about this schedule. Like it goes fast. Okay, the day goes so fast. Again. Like I might have it like 30. Okay. Like 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 uh, no, I was going. So good. Okay. So let me just get the guys. I literally did. All right, here we go. Yesterday, where did we leave off? <laughs> Yeah, we, we went through and typed everything in today, guys, guys, hey, guys. Get your calculators out. We're doing the calculator exercise now. Remember, you were asked to bring, you got to have them, kids. We've got to have these calculators with us. Um, yesterday, we went through part four. What? And we did everything that was a degree. We did all the degree problems, remember? Today, we're going to start here, and we were going to do all the radian problem. So what I need for you to do is go to mode and change your calculator into radian. Because now the angles that we input are going to be in radians. All right, so I need everybody listening to me and doing what I say. Get your calculator out, turn it on, go to mode, change it into radians. Got it. Okay? Now, the first radian problem is B. It says cosine pi over 9, right? Okay, so what that means now is we're going to take our calculator. I don't think so. We are on part four, page 33, part four, problem B. We are finding the cosine of pi over nine with my calculator. So I'm going to type cosine, and then if you look over on your caret button, above the caret button is your pi. So you're going to press second caret, and that's going to give you the pi, and then divided by 9. Pi is by the, here's the caret button, over, right under your clear button, and pi is right above it, so you'll second caret, that gives you pi, and then divided by 9. The answer you should get is 0.9397, if I round it off. Raise your hand if you got 0.9397. Okay, if your hand's not up, is that because you don't have a calculator or because you got something different? Okay, are you set in radians? Yes. Did you type cosine, pi sine, divided by nine? The pi divided by nine should be in parentheses. I'm still doing damn it, Oh, thank you, Joseph. Kervin needs somebody to take care of All right, D, here we go. D says, let's find the cosecant of pi five pi over 16. Now, in this problem, what was the very first thing you did? You pressed cosine, right? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could press cosecant? But we can't. So we have to remember what cosecant is. We don't have that button. So we have to remember what it is. What is cosecant? One divided by sine. So you're going to do everything exactly the same way, except you start with one divided by sine, and then five pi divided by 16, and then close the parentheses. Don't use any parentheses other than these. These are the parentheses, the only ones you should have in your problem. And the answer you get should be, anybody want to volunteer it? 
1.2027. All right, let's see. What's the next gradient one? Secant 18 pi over 23. Now, again, just like the last one, I would love to press secant. But I can't, so what am I going to press instead? One divided by cosine. Good. So, one divided by cosine. 18 pi divided by 23. Negative 1.2891. Is that right? Asia, you doing okay over there? Clayton, you matching here? Jonathan? All right, and let's see, is that, oh no, there's one more. H, believe it or not, H is a radian problem. And this is something I didn't tell you about that I should have. If it is a degree problem, there should be a degree symbol. So like, for example, in A, it says secant 10 degrees. If there's no degree symbol, then it's a radian. So this is a radian problem because there's no degree mark there. Now, once in a while, Mrs. Ford, it gets lazy or forgetful or something. And I'll say something like this, sine 60 and I'll forget to put that degree mark on there. If it's a 60, ask me. Mrs. Ford, did you mean for there to be a degree mark? Because 30 and 60 and 45 are special degree angles, and usually if there's a 60, that's a degree, or a 45, or a 30. So ask me if you're unsure, okay? Because sometimes I make mistakes more often than I would like to admit. All right, cosecant two, that is a cosecant problem. I don't have a cosecant button, so we're going to put one over sine two. That's easy, one divided by sine two equals one over sine two. Okay, let's see, 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 let's are you okay with that? All right, so right now, your calculator is set in radians. Remember that. If you need it to be in degrees, you need to go back to mode and change it, okay? It's half the time we're in radians, half the time we're in degrees, so it doesn't matter. Just change it when you need to. On a test or quiz, I would suggest you do it the way we just did. Go through and do all the problems of one kind first, then reset your calculator and go back and do all the ones of the other kind. Does that make sense? All right. Now we're going to put them away because the next set says no calculator. The next part says no calculator. problems are a little bit harder. Here's what I need for you to do. I want you to first of all, I want you to start with this picture. And we are going to draw, I, and you don't have to draw these because some of them are going to need erased. But the triangles that we draw are always going to be part of what we call the butterfly bow tie. Have I talked about that yet? No. no. Okay. So every triangle we draw is going to be part of the butterfly bow tie. So what I mean is you're going to either draw a triangle that looks like that, that's this piece, or maybe you'll draw this, that's that piece. You will never draw a triangle that looks like that. That is not part of the butterfly. Do you see that? So when you draw a triangle, make sure it's one of these. All of these problems in number four or five, part five, 
are going to be involve two triangles. Okay? You got to figure out which of these two, uh, there's four here, which two are going to be the answers or help us get the answers to this problem. Now, I'm going to start right here in quadrant one and we're going to see if it makes sense. If the cosine is one half, then that would mean the adjacent side, I'm looking at this triangle right here, I'm going to erase the rest of it so it's not confusing to you. The cosine would be one half, that means the adjacent side would be one and the hypotenuse would be two. So katoa, right? Now, does that make sense? Cosine's one half, does that make sense to you? Yeah. That makes sense. All right, so that's one of our, that's going to give us one of the answers. All right, let's investigate this one. Because Mrs. Ford said there's going to be two. Here's one of them. Now, the angle of the origin right here, this is the one we look at. We talked about that yesterday or the day before. Could this be one half? Does that make sense for that to be one half? What? I have a question. What? Oh, yeah. Would the, would the other side automatically be one? No. The other side's automatically going to be root three. Mm -hmm. Because Wait, no, I, was, I was thinking so, if we're kind of about right. two square root. Yeah. yeah. If two were square rooted, it would automatically be one. And we'll have problems like that. But in this one, it's a one and a regular two, so that's a root three. All right. Over here, and that's going to help us. That's good to know. But let's come over here now. And I'm telling you, this doesn't make sense. Because over here, that one would have to be negative. Why would that one have to be a negative one over there? It's on the negative side. That's right, Mashani, it's left. If you go, here's the origin. If you go this way, aren't you going negative? And so that one's not gonna work. That's a no-go. All right, what about this one? Well, that uses the same side. It'd be negative one over two. That won't work. What about this one? One, two. Will that work? That triangle will work. So for this problem, the two that we need, the two triangles that we need are in quadrants one and four. Okay? Who memorized the cosine is x over r? Did you memorize that off your sheet? If x is positive, the cosine is going to be positive because cosine is x. This is where x is positive. All right? It's not that bad, Joseph. I don't know why you point at me. Okay, hang on. What? Just hang on. Let's finish this problem and we'll make sense of the next one. All right, let, I'm going to go ahead and finish this one and we'll do the next one. We'll talk about it again and see if we get it straightened out. But here's the deal. If you draw your triangle and you go left, x is going to be x. This is the x axis. There's the x axis. If you go left, that number is going to be negative. There are no negatives in my problem, so I know that can't be right. I can't be going left. That's why I drew two triangles on the right side. Now, Robbie finished this triangle off. From the problem, I had a one here and a two here, but Robbie said that means that has to be a root three, which means how big is that angle? Well, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but which one is across from the root three? 60. The 60. That is a 60 degree angle. So is this, because these two triangles are identical. One of them is up, one of them is down. Wait, so why are those not 60? Okay, these would be 60, but they're not answers to this question, Jonathan, because this has a, that cosine would be negative. That cosine would be negative and I need a positive one. But yes, the angles would be 60 if I needed them, if I were going to use them. Absolutely. Okay? Now, I need to answer the question. When you drew the angles, the triangles, these are the actual angles, these diagonal things coming out of here. These are the angles. 
So you need to tell me, start right here, go to the first diagonal line. How many degrees is that? 60. 60. So one of your answers is 60. Start at the same place. Go all the way around to the other diagonal line. How big is that angle? Be careful, you can figure it out. Wait, what was the question? This big red one. Uh, How okay. big is that big red angle? Uh, Somebody said it. 300. 300. Why is it 300? 360 minus 60. Because all the way around is 360. Hey, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm getting a little bit. Where's the weird noise coming from the corner? Do you hear it? Um, it's not the corner, it's over there. Yeah, you, you hear just it? Just listen. Be quiet. It's like over there. Is it that phone back there? No, it's like a small TV noise. Yeah. That does sound like a mouse, dude. It's a rush. Here's the deal. If it is a mouse, we think we have a mouse in the world. <laughs> so if it is a mouse in the wall, it's in the wall. Okay? So we don't have to worry about it. It's actually in between those two feet. <laughs> Hey, Austin. Austin, we gotta ma remake that rap video. Yeah, please don't talk to the middle one. That's that. He's up there on the wall, right up there. The very top picture with the pink, kind of pink borders in there. Oh, no. There you go. Right in the middle. I thought she was talking about the top. My favorite teacher. My favorite teacher of all time. She taught me how to slalom water skis. Don't make me cry. Hey. It with the guy, with those two other guys. There's two other guys. The summer of it's a four. Shut your mouth. And guys uh, with Mr. McGowan. <laughs> and she taught us how to slow. <laughs> 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 hey, no, I just want, I always chop on you know, every once in a while. I've got a nephew, Nicholas Murphy here. Do you know Nick Murphy? Yeah. 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 And a niece, and a niece, Elizabeth. All right, so anyways, or you can go back to the consent lecture. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thanks for coming in. All right, so our answers were 60 and 300. Guys, if there's a mouse, it's in the wall. Forget it. Just forget it. He's not in the room. He's not coming in. He's scared of us. Don't worry. Alright, let's try the next one. This is probably the hardest part of the chapter, but we're going to figure it out. It'll be fine. So we're going to start with problem number two that says the sign of the angle is 1 over root 2. Now, you're looking at that saying, that's not what mine says, but actually it is. Oh, because yeah, if, if right, you rationalize right. that, wouldn't it be root 2 over 2? Yeah. Now, the reason I like it better in this form is because when I go to draw it, I'm just going to draw one angle and triangle at a time, that says the opposite side is 1 and the hypotenuse is root 2. Now, do you recognize that triangle? It's a 45-45-90, so it would look like this, right? Now, does that picture make sense if that's supposed to be the sign? Is the sign opposite over hypotenuse 1 over root 2? Yes. Yeah, that's a perfect picture. That's beautiful. All right, so let's try the next quadrant, because remember, every one of these problems is going to have two answers. So I got one of them figured out. Now I'm going to do the second one. Opposite over hypotenuse has to be 1 over root 2. Now, does that make sense? Is that what the sign is supposed to be? 1 over root 2. Is that right? 
Yeah, so that angle is also 45, and that's another answer. What's the matter, Austin? Go ahead and ask. I don't really know what that is. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll keep watching. So we got four. We'll practice our way through it. Now, Mrs. Ford told you there are two answers. These are them. There aren't going to be any more, but I want to show you why this wouldn't be an answer. Because Jonathan's going to say, well, wait, Mrs. Ford, one root two, wouldn't that be a 45? And it would be, but this wouldn't be a one. This would have to be a negative one because it's going down. And I need my opposite side to be positive. So that means that has to be going up. So you see, this one won't work either, will it? Because that would be a negative one. You could draw a triangle and you would have a 45 degree angle, but it would be a negative one and not a positive one. Deshani. How come on the last one, like, you knocked out that top one, but on this one? Well, work? remember now, it's a different problem. Um, this is cosine. So with cosine, I'm not looking at the opposite side. I was looking at the adjacent side. And the adjacent side is right here, Vishani. I need that to be positive. Oh, okay. I need that to be positive. And so for Over here, I need the opposite side to be positive. Okay. The opposite side. That's this side right here. I need that to be positive. Okay. Okay? Now, I don't have the answers yet, so I need to get my answers. My answers, remember, are here, here are the two triangles that work. So how big is this angle? 45. That's easy. One of the answers is 45. Now the other one, you still start right here. And you go until you hit it. Now be careful your common sense exactly so what would that be 135 can you explain yep sure can remember remember kids first of all we always start here if i didn't tell you that before i'm telling you now this is where we start if i went all the way to here how far would that be 180 but I didn't go that far because I had this line sticking out here. I only went to here, right? Mm -hmm. How much was that? 45. So instead of going all the way to 180, I stopped when I still had 45 degrees to go. So how can I figure out what that angle is? 180 minus 45, and that is 135. Okay? Now, somebody's going to say, well, let us know what you did over here. Of course not, because over here I'm in a different place, right? Over here, I got all the way around. Here I didn't. I only went this far over here, so I do it differently. Every problem is different. But you always start right there. But right? you always start right there. You always start right there, and you go up. You start there and go up and around. Um, how is it again that we know which side to look for to see if it would stay positive? What function do you have? If it's cosine, you're looking at adjacent over hypotenuse. If it's sine, you're looking at opposite over hypotenuse. <laughs> All right, so let's see what the next one is. Things are starting to come together for us. What's the next one? Cosecant is two over one. All right, kids. We don't do cosecants. Cosecants are one of those weird functions. So does that mean we skip this problem? No, we don't skip this problem. All right, cosecant. If the cosecant is 2 over 1. The sign is 1 over 2. Exactly. Yeah. Look at you. Exactly. So we're not going to think of it as a cosecant. We're going to think of it as a sign. And we're going to set up our thing. We're going to start drawing pictures. And if you have the opposite side is positive 1 and the hypotenuse is 2, you are good. So I need the opposite side to be positive 1 and the hypotenuse to be 2. Does that work? Yes. Yes. All right. Opposite side, positive 1, hypotenuse 2. Does that work? Well, I know there's only two, so I don't even really need to go on. But once again, let me do it. 
Opposite side, positive one, hypotenuse two. Does that work? No, because that's not positive. <coughs> See how that's going down? That's negative, so that one's not gonna work and neither is that one. Okay, take a look at this triangle. You need to figure out this angle. That's a special triangle. There's your one, there's your two. This is your root three. <laughs> How big is that angle right there? If you cross from the one, that's a 30. These are both 30s. They're, they're always the same. The triangles always match up. Like Jonathan said, you got 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 all the way around. 15. So what are the answers? One of the answers is 30. And the other answer is 150. You start to get it? Yeah. They're hard. They take a while. <laughs> All right, next. We've got tangent equals 1. Okay, we got tangent equals 1. All right. I'm going to draw this. I don't know if it works or not, but I'm going to try it. I think of that as 1 over 1. So opposite is 1, adjacent is 1. And that would make this root 2. And that would make this angle 45, right? Now, be careful. Does that triangle make sense? Positive 1, positive 1. Is that okay? That's fine. Let's try this one. That would have to be one, one, root two. Okay, I'm good with that. Is that a positive one? Yep. That one is positive. Is this a positive one? No. That is a negative one. Why is this one negative? Because it's going left. Here's the origin. If you're on this side, that's going to be negative. So that triangle doesn't work. I don't want a negative one. I need one. All right, let's try this one. Actually, this is a yes. Why? Why? What's the opposite side? Negative one. What's the adjacent side? Negative one. What happens when I put the negative over the negative? It becomes positive. I got you. It becomes positive. Oh, smart. Oh, I got you. Okay, so that one works. I know. I know. So much. That one works. Now, we found our two, so we're done. But I'm going to go ahead and show you this one why this one won't work. Why won't this one work? What's wrong with this one? It has a positive, but it also has a negative. So that's not going to work. Now, your angles are 45, so what are the answers? That angle right there is 45. All right, now I'll see who's paying attention. What's that one? 225, amazing, great job. Now, why is that 225? Because from here to here is 180, and then we're going 45 more. Deshani. Okay, so for um, tangent, tangent, um, opposite and adjacent have to be positive? Both of them? They either have to both be positive <laughs> or both negative. Okay. Because if they're both negative, the number will still turn out positive. Okay. Okay? <laughs> All right. See if we can get them down. About two more and then I'll stop, okay? Let's see if we can get through this. The secant <laughs> is 2 over root 3. Now I'm going to leave it that way because I am not going to do a secant problem. I'm going to remember that if the secant is 2 over root 3, the cosine will be root 3 over 2? Yeah. Oh, wait. This is what you said, yeah. Right? Yeah. So here we go. I'm looking at that. Cosine. Adjacent 
over hypotenuse. Why are we doing cosine? Because the problem started out as a secant. And we just flipped it. Now, does that make sense? Is that okay? Positive root 3 over 2, does that look okay? Yeah. How about this one? Would this be positive root or positive root 3 over 2? Would that one be positive root 3 no. over 2? No. This would have to be negative, wouldn't it? Not going to work. How about here? Is that one going to be positive root 3 over 2? No, not going to work. How about this one? Is that one going to be positive root 3 over 2? I hope so, because I have to have two answers, right? Jonathan? Wouldn't the one on the left be negative 3 over negative 2? Actually, we haven't talked about this, Jonathan. Great question. The hypotenuse is never negative. So x can be negative, oh, x yeah, can be negative, and y can be negative, but the diagonals are always going to be positive, always positive, always positive, okay? So great question, but no, never negative on the radius, or on the hypotenuse, never. Now, if that's a one, root 3 and that's a 2, that would have to be a 1, right? And how big is your angle here? 30, 30. So that's a 30 and that's a 30. Remember, the angles within the problem always match. Start here. There's an answer. What is it? 30. Start here. All the way around to the diagonal line. How big would that one be? 330. 330 degrees. For those of you that aren't sure about that, if you went all the way around, it would be 360. We stopped here and still had 30 to go. So it's 360 minus 30, 330. All right, I need everybody paying attention. We have one more and then you are free for the weekend, okay? One more problem. One more problem. Cotangent theta equals root 3. I don't, that's root 3 over 1. I don't like cotangent very well, so I'm going to think of that as tangent is 1 over root 3. So if I were, if this, if I were putting this down in the answer line, that would be root 3 over 3. But all I need to do is draw that. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to make the opposite side 1 and the adjacent side root 3. Does that make sense? I mean, is everything positive, in other words? Yeah. Okay, so we're good. The hypotenuse would be what? 2. All right, let's come over here. Opposite height or opposite and adjacent. How does that look? Does that triangle make sense sitting where it's sitting? Uh -huh. No. What's wrong with it? Negative. negative. That would have to be negative, right? And it's not. It's supposed to be. So there you go. Doesn't work. Let's try this one. Does that triangle make sense? Yes. Yes, no. because that one is really a negative. negative. And when I put my negative over my negative, it will give me a positive fraction. So my answers are going to be here and here. Now, can you tell how big that angle is? 30. So is this one. Your answers are going to be that angle and this angle. So what do we got? Eric? 30 and 210. Because we got 30 from here, and then this guy is going to be 180 plus 30 more. Oh, okay, yeah, no, no, no. That would have to be over here, and it's not. So we're going to use 180 and 30 more, so that would be 200 and 70 degrees.